Peace and greetings everyone, Divinezo here. <clears throat> I wanted to go over uh, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi jammer code. Um, if you're not aware, you can find it here uh, at my GitHub. I'll post the link down below. Um, but let's look at the code for people who maybe so are we'll uh, look at the code real quick. Um, Cause yeah, I know a lot of people probably are not familiar with uh, C++. So when you open up the cypherjammer.eno file, uh, you'll see a few things here. Uh, I'm in VS Code right now. Um, but these are the libraries that it uh, implements. And then uh, it initializes uh, two different SPI classes. And these are the SPI buses on your um, ESP32. So you're gonna, if you're using uh, two NRF24 modules, you're going to need to initialize two. And uh, this is where it initializes each um, uh, radio. So you have uh, the first one, and it's uh, chip enable and chip select uh, pin. So you can see here, um, gives you some uh, different options. And then you're going to want to set the second one. Uh, but the most important stuff, uh, will be down here. So we have uh, two different flags, and uh, these are just to help the direct the direction of the channel hopping. So how it works, I think it's best first to um, kind of look at um, what the Wi-Fi channels are. So here's a good diagram, and it shows channels so one through four. The, um, Wi-Fi channels for uh, 1 through 14. So you can see that 2.4 gigahertz, it's actually over quite a decent range. And um, you could find out which channel your network is by going um, into some different settings. Um, but basically what the jammer does for Wi-Fi and also for the other channels is that it just hops uh, along different channels and it sends out tons of different requests um, so <clears throat> every time it sends out like hundreds of different requests on each channel it confuses your device so it doesn't understand um, where that channel so, from um, your device like let's say your router or something gets confused and it doesn't know because there's just way too many messages incoming. And here's a more detailed um, description on the Wikipedia. Uh, so it gives the specific uh, frequencies. Um, so let's say if you want to take things uh, a little bit further, like I'll be making in a future project, um, you can have a signal generator that hits these uh, specific frequencies a little bit more targeted than uh, what this is currently doing. Topping to the general uh, frequencies. Um, but once again, you can get a little bit more uh, fine-tuned. And you can look on um, uh, Google to see just some other different um, versions of that. So now jumping back to the code, um, the most important things of how this works and how you want to edit it if you want to affect uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for drones um, is in these areas right here. Um, cause as you can see, <clears throat> basically uses, uh, an if else statement. So there's two, uh, different radios. So channel one, CH1 is one radio, TH is the other. So these are just, uh, for the two different radios. So, uh, if the channel is, um, greater than 79, this uh, flips the flag. So it changes the direction in which the channel hopping goes. So if you want to affect only Wi-Fi, then you would change this to uh, 14 and that to 14. But if you want to affect uh, drones, you know, you would change that to 125. Um, or if you just want like specific channels, you know, no, you just ed edit that.
So that's where um, in this loop, when it calls the function, um, it just keeps setting the channels to different um, numbers, and that's how it hops. So there's two different functions. There's this two function, um, which kind of hops incrementally, as you can see. Um, it hops uh, by every four channels. And then you have this one function, um, which I found uh, better performance with, I think. Uh, but you could then set the channel um, for Wi-Fi to 14, and then you can uh, mess around with this delay. Um, so that way you can, um, with this, it just hits them all randomly. So the channels are just going in all different directions. <clears throat> and that way it confuses the device. Um, so the setup is where the... Um, device starts and this is where you'll edit um, if you only have one then you'll just only be initializing um, one of the radios uh, but if you have two you know you'll initialize both and then this is where it sets up uh, the uh, radio and you can uh, change the configurations if you want um, and because a lot of people uh, they really don't change too much so they might find issues or the range might not be that great and um, here is the loop part so that's where you'll um, have the functions that you have running and also uh, this is kind of how I have it running um, let me just comment this out Um, but I just have uh, the one going. Oops. And uh, if you're not using the button, you could also uh, take the button off. It really doesn't matter, this toggle switch uh, code. Um, but I just have the one function going um, because then it just focuses on um, doing random uh, channel hopping but you once again this is open source so you could just play around with it and um, kind of do what works best for you but uh, yeah if you have any questions uh, please let me know and um, you can make this jammer once again from uh, some PCB files I've had uh, designed and made and it makes it a lot easier to uh, test and use this device but if you have any questions, uh, please let me know.